Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. Recently I've been doing quite a bit of sketching from my imagination and I wanted to take you through both a real-time demo of how I add colour to these black and white sketches and also chat about what I feel has worked well and also how working from my imagination tells me where I need to improve. So here's one of the first sketches. This one was the only one in the batch which actually began working from a reference. So there was a stone wall which had lots of sort of hedges and stuff growing over the top of it and then a tree poking out the top. So I did a very loose uh, ink drawing, no pencil, just ink drawing um, and just a pure line drawing. I did that quite quickly and you can see that then I've added watercolour on top and I've worked in a number of different ways exploring different textures. So the bits that I feel work best here are these leaves and how they're just sort of picked out at different orientations from a variety of colours. The bit I'm least happy with is probably the mark making here. So that's just a simple example of I might use that technique again at some point in the future, but I probably will avoid if I remember to remember to do it, I will probably avoid doing that for foliage, that kind of line and, and squiggle technique. I'm not too keen on that one. So here's another one. Now, this was completely from my imagination. And so I just started sketching a guy on a bench. And then I thought, well, I could actually have him in sort of a snow scene, sharing the bench with a snowman. And on the whole, I quite like this one. I think it's got kind of almost a little bit of a vintage feel because of the way I've shaded the right hand side of this figure. Now, the question, of course, is, you know, why is this chap sat outside on a snowy day when he's clearly you know, not dressed particularly warmly, although it's a bit debatable. He could have you know, a big thick coat on behind the, the newspaper. The hands are a little bit too big, but I don't mind that for, you know, for a cartoon. That, that's OK. Um, I showed this one to my wife and she goes, well, why is his arm so short? It would be better if he had if the snowman had a longer arm and was holding a cup of you know, steaming coffee, like from Starbucks or something. So I like that idea. Uh, I'm going to put that one up on my website as is, but I probably will add some colour at some point and I'll almost certainly do another version with the, the coffee as well. Now, this is just a restaurant scene, again, purely from my imagination. So we've got a waiter here holding some drinks ready to serve. Got a woman with a head on her hand um, and she's gazing off into the distance. Perhaps she's bored. Perhaps she's looking at the waiter. Perhaps she's daydreaming or perhaps she's just intently listening to this chap who's hidden from view. So you can see I've barely indicated the hands there and I kind of struggled with this hand. Um, you know, it's OK, but I had to kind of correct it a little bit working from my imagination. Um, and so I quite like the composition and the feel of this one. I think there's a nice little bit of narrative going on. I like the little cherry in the glass there. I like the way the hand is just hinted at here. But one of my weaknesses would be when working from my imagination, you can see I, I've tended to keep the poses of the hands quite simple. Um, so if I was trying to draw from my imagination, somebody clicking their fingers or crossing their fingers like this, you know, I would struggle more. So that's an area of weakness that I could work on. But again, I think I'm going to keep that one black and white. And then when I've scanned it in, I will add some color. So I, I get two versions of it. Um, this one, I think, worked quite well. It's simple, but the title of this one is Do I Have a Snowball? So the girl's hands are clasped together. Does she have a snowball hidden, ready to throw at you or not? You know, who can tell? But that's kind of the fun. And it's just a simple little composition with trees and snowflakes and a, a snowman off in the distance. So that one's that one's OK, I think. Not, not too many comments for that one. Again, from my imagination, I started sketching figures. So the couple came to me fairly easily, you know, walking arm in arm or at the very least quite closely together. I, I like the just the, you know, minimal uh, drawing here for these two figures in the distance. I wanted to have the figures not all be in the same orientation. So I had this girl or person looking off this way and you can see the hand behind the back. So that hands worked quite well, I think. This guy's good, but this guy Although he's not terribly drawn, it's just that 
I've made him a little bit too much of a portrait. These figures are anonymous. They could be anyone, almost anywhere. This is starting to look like an individual. And I feel it kind of detracts from this stuff to the right of my hand. So I'm probably going to crop this one around about here. And, I, and then I quite like the idea of having an arm or the side of a figure. You know, we don't know who it is then if I, if I do that, just kind of peeking in in the foreground. And again, that's when I'll keep black and white scan in and then I will eventually add some colour. Here's another weird one, again from my imagination, but partly inspired by a, um, a bridge and a, a building not too far from here. Got the perspective kind of messed up here, but the idea is you've got these giant rabbits that are just wandering through the countryside. One's in the water, one's lying down on the bank, one's looking out over the bridge. So I quite like the humour there, but I haven't, haven't drawn that one all that well. Here's another weird one. So I started out by drawing this figure, um, added some buildings, then I added the police car, and then I added the crashed car and the, and the wheel which had come off, and then I added roses tumbling from top to bottom. Um, I'm not sure about this one, it's a bit weird. I started to add some colour. I haven't quite made up my mind whether um, whether I'm going to continue with that. I mean, I think that half, the right hand half again, works reasonably well. I'm not sure about these buildings and the roses. I mean, it's certainly a weird image, but not one of my favourites. Um, and then this one here, as you know, if you watch the channel regularly, I, I paint and draw a lot of cattle. And one of the cat, one of the breeds of cattle I'm going to paint fairly soon are white Galloway cattle. And they are pure white, but they have colour in the inside of their ears and their nose. I also paint a lot of belted Galloway cattle and they're very distinctive because they're either just black with a single white stripe around their midriff or they're just kind of orangey brown with the same white stripe. And I thought, well, I could do my own version where it's a white Galloway, but with a black stripe. So this is just a little sketch on a scrap bit of paper uh, with a biro. So the drawing's not quite as I want it. It's not terrible, but it's not quite as I want it. But I quite like the idea of that. So I might explore that. And then this one. I thought, well, I could even stretch the belted Galloway a little bit further and have a double striped belted Galloway. Uh, and then I experimented briefly with having a white cross on the side of a dark cow. So I have a feeling that that one is going to show up pretty soon in some of my work. I quite like the idea and the kind of design of that cow. And then at some point, I'll also probably do something with this as well. And then here's a little sketch I did again, purely from my imagination of a black cow with kind of an invisible man type guy in a furry suit standing in front of the midriff. So the question is, the idea of this little cartoon is, is this a belted Galloway cow? Does the cow also have a white stripe down its middle? Or is it just a black cow with a guy in a white fluffy suit standing in front of it? So, um, or is it a guy in a white fluffy suit standing behind the cow's midriff and the cow does have a white stripe around its middle, which is visible. And you can see that I've put kind of a little um, kink in the tie as if the tie is falling across the back and, and sort of over the side down onto the side of the cow. So there's three possible interpretations there. So it's just a bit of fun. But again, just did it completely out of my head, no reference. And, you know, it's something I just really enjoy. I find it very relaxing and just great fun, really. And it's, you know, you can inject quite a bit of humour into these sketches if you want to. But what I'm doing now is, um, so all of these, apart from that little uh, uh, cattle sketch I showed you just before this one, all of these were done on A4 mixed media paper. Um, I used a uni, uh, uni pin marker pen to do the drawings. And uh, now I'm coming in with watercolour and I'm using just a water brush to just put down some some colours really and just see what happens. So the first thing I did, although this is going to be a black cow, inverted commas, I put down a little bit of orangey brown and I've used something similar, uh, basically orange in the background near the horizon. So just to echo that colour, because when painting uh, animals with black fur, um, whether it's a cow or a cat or a rabbit, they often have a lot of different colours in there. They're quite subtle, 
but they have a lot of different colors in their fur, especially when the light catches them. So having done that, now I'm coming in with um, some cerulean blue. And one of the things I love about doing these cartoons, especially if they've got a surreal twist or even just a humorous twist, um, is, you know, you can really just explore and, and kind of mix things that you learn from doing representational, more realistic art. Obviously, you can stretch things. You can make somebody's nose huge or their eyes big or whatever you like, you know, if it's because it's a cartoon. But then you can just stylize things as well. So, for example, with this sky, the reason I'm using these horizontal stripes, I put in that kind of uh, orange near the horizon. Now I'm doing blue stripes going from left to right across the sky is it contrasts with the vertical stripe that the the animal may or may not have and also the fact that the guy is just standing there dead vertical as well and the idea of this is also to i'm not going to define the outline of the head so the idea is to have a little bit of dark color you know creeping up from left and right to the edge of the the guy's head just below the hat and then I won't do any more in terms of describing the outline. So if I'd left it completely blank, I, I guess it could have still worked if I just had a pure white sky, but I just felt I needed to to place the guy's head and give some indication of its width, although the, you could argue the hat alone does that. I'm working with the paper horizontal here, which I often do um, you know, if, if I'm out and about, uh, out on the beach or something, I, I put it, I have it near horizontal quite often. It's less susceptible to the wind. When I'm working on this small scale, and obviously I'm indoors here, so, so that that's not as much of a problem at all. It's not a problem at all, you know, but um, the reason I'm working flat is just, uh, I just find it easier, I think, with small pieces of paper. If I'm working A2 or bigger, then I definitely prefer working near vertical as a rule. But um, if I'm out and about at the beach, I will have the paper down flat then. OK, so got some blue on the brush, so adding some more blue, a little stronger this time. And so I've mixed that cerulean in with a little bit of um, cobalt, I think. And just filling in, going over the pen work completely. So the Unipin marker puts down a water resistant ink, so you don't have to worry about the lines running. And because watercolour is transparent, if you, you know, apply it thinly, then you can see all of those squiggles that I put down for the fur. All of that line work shows through. So it's quite a nice, efficient way to work because you can do the tonal work with your marker pen. And, you know, I haven't done that in this case, but I could I could have coming with a sharpie pen as well to block in big patches of shadow here if I wished because the uni pins are great for fine line work but if you're trying to really block in a big area of dark then you know it's probably better to use a sharpie or some other kind of uh, thicker nib marker pen and then what I'm doing here is just putting in little hints of shadow under those little squiggles that I've put in on, on the furry suit and or the the stripe on the, on the cow um, because I just want to, you know, convey something of a texture to the suit. But the whole point of the figure is that it's going to be fairly minimal in terms of the way I depict it. So I'm not going to go too crazy, but just some hints of shadow. So that there are these little tufts of hair. It's a highly textured fabric. So I could have almost stopped there, really. You know, it's um, it's it's debatable, really. I think, you know, when overworking begins, um, and it's really just a matter of personal preference. I've I've often considered kind of recording properly different stages of a painting. So as mentioned, I'll, I'll you know I've, I'll. I didn't actually scan this one in as black and white. This is the only one of the ones um, I showed you earlier that uh, I, I didn't scan in as black and white. But the others I have are the ones I want to keep. And so consequently, when I, after I've colored them, I'll have two versions, the black and white version and the color version. And I really like having the record of that 
you know, of the drawing and the painting. Um, and I have had people in the past, they've bought a painting from me as a print. And then they've got in touch and said, hey, I, I really like this. You don't happen to have the, the black and white version as well, do you please? Because I'd like to buy that too, you know. So just from sort of an art marketing point of view, it's kind of a, a good idea to do that. Um, and I've sometimes considered and have done this in the past to an extent. I've sometimes considered sort of photographing carefully or scanning in the drawing and then kind of the blocked in stage or, you know, the, the early stages, because often those preliminary marks and washes have quite a, a unique character to them and a visual impact. And then, you know, and then the finished painting. So I've done that before. We've got three images from uh, a single painting that you can make prints from. And then, of course, you could take that even further and maybe do 10 or, or 20, depending on the complexity of the painting. Um, but what I find is, in general, I, I don't do that because it's it's so time consuming, scanning and adjusting the color and the contrast and uploading that I'd rather be painting new stuff more often. So I tend to, you know, I do do it a little bit, but I tend to just balance all the kind of admin marketing, uh, computer processing side of things. I always try to balance that in the favor of just creating more art um, because, you know, that, that's the thing I love to do so much. Um, right. So while I was chatting away there, I've added a bit of color, obviously, to the to the, the foreground, a little bit of gr a grass color, kind of a sea green. And then that same color has been added to the hat band to um, just, you know, add a little bit of um, visual bounce. So that hopefully the eye will bounce from the green hat band to the, the green grass and back and forth. Bit of orange going in for the tie, which again, um, echoes the orange in the background near the horizon. And I did debate in that you know, I've got the tie kind of curving. So, so the, you know, obviously a, a necktie has uh, two parts to it. Once it's tied, it's got the thicker part you put in front and then the little bit that you put behind. And the narrower part you can see of the tie kind of disappears behind the top edge of the cat of the cow's back if we're interpreting this as the guy standing behind the cow um, now other other than that you can think well the tie just stops there the thicker part of the tie cascades over the back of the cow if we're taking that interpretation or it's just you know caught on the furry jacket or shirt or whatever it is he's wearing so it's that's why it's at that funny angle now what i'm doing at this moment is putting in a bit of darker color um, on the hindquarters and also down on the udder and the, the tail and so on. I did consider putting a little bit of shadow, you know, along the bottom edge of the cow silhouette, you know, where the where the guy's suit is, because that could be the bottom of his jacket. And that could be another interpretation an, another possible question mark as to what's going on. But I, I thought if I did that, it would take away the ambiguity, which is something I want to maintain in this quirky, surreal cartoon. So. I mean, is it even a cartoon? It's almost more of an illustration, I would say. I would say it's halfway between a cartoon and a, and a, and a pucker, pucker drawing. Um, but yes, just some of the things I consider when I'm sort of working in this way. And then I've just darkened the sunglasses as well. So there's almost something I feel, it's only a small painting, but there's almost something cinematic about the image and that you know the animals on the horizon and this guy this enigmatic very strange character is there with his hat and his shades and his tie but uh yeah let's not uh let's not become too uh um involved in our own hype you know it is just a fun cartoon of a guy with it with an animal here so a bit of orange going in now, again, continuing that orange theme for the hat, but I'm deliberately leaving um, the outer edges of the hat uh, unpainted. So the top and the far left and right edges. A bit more orange onto the tie. So just coming back in with some stronger, darker orange now. These subdued colours, which uh, you find on black furred animals or black haired animals, um, 
you know, they really are much darker than I've got them really. And so I think what I'll probably do is put a wash of purple over the entire cow, perhaps leaving the nose uh, as it is. Uh, and that's going to kind of uh, cohere the entire kind of multitude of colours that I've got uh, scattered across the body at the moment. Just put in a light yellow on the edges of the hat and uh, a slightly bolder yellow on the collar of the guy. So the idea of the lighter colour on the edges of the hat is to depict some kind of light bouncing off the edge. And then the, the yellow on the collar was simply to just define the neckline a little more than I had. So I did end up adding that purple wash to the cow. I also added a little bit of shadow under the guy's nose and the brim of the hat, but you know, not too many changes really. But um, I enjoyed painting this one. It's something, you know, I haven't done before at all, you know, completely unique idea from my perspective. Yeah, maybe somebody else has done it somewhere, but you know, who knows? That's always that's always a mystery. But uh, really enjoy exploring sketching from my imagination. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.